and we need our edges like we can have long hair but if you have long hair and no edges you gotta pick a struggle you can't have both baby you gotta pick a struggle what's going on you guys it's a girl there welcome and welcome back to my channel if you guys are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button turn on that post bell notification to get notified every single time you go upload the video which is every wednesday and saturday now and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up also follow me on my main social media account at here's there it is always on that screen baby but without further ado as you guys can see baby today i'm not coming with one I'm not coming with two, I'm not coming with five, I'm coming with ten reasons why your natural hair is not growing, all right? Now some of these reasons, actually all of these reasons are coming from me. They're definitely things that I kind of started to incorporate this year. Because honestly y'all, being a naturalista and having natural hair is a journey, it's a roller coaster. Like you really learn your hair every day, you learn what it needs, how to nourish it, um, and all of the above. So let's hop right into it. So I do have my little notes right here I'm going to show you guys. I went ham, y'all. I haven't used that word in so long. I went into detail, baby. Y'all see that? I went into detail about reasons why your natural hair is not growing. I actually do want to share some stories. I'm going to insert some pictures. All right, we about to have fun today. Today's going to be a good day. So number one on the list is definitely too much heat. That's probably one of the main reasons why your natural hair is not growing. And that goes for blow drying your hair flat iron it every two weeks or once a week or every wash day if you're flat ironing your hair and blowing it out at least two to three times a month that is bad baby and you need to cut that out right now all right applying too much heat to your hair can result in your hair being very dry and brittle especially when it comes to flat ironing your hair we always love that flat look we love our hair being so silky and fresh and flowy and we know during the winter time there's like this whole silk press season type of thing no i'm not that girl Mm -mm, baby i've seen so many people so press their hair and the heat damage the heat damage y'all after is beyond me i will never mm, let me not say never because i don't want five years to pass and then i finally get a silk press and y'all like daya i thought you said you're never gonna get a silk press but literally i will hold off on getting a silk press because the heat damage after is crazy and I really don't recommend you guys to do it. I think it's very, very important for you to at least extend the times between your like heat styles. Like let's say if you flat iron your hair or blotch your hair in January, I think that the next time you should flat iron or blotch your hair will probably be in like April or March. Like give yourself a good month or two to three months wide span so you know like, okay, like I can blow out my hair now. I can flat iron my hair now because I didn't do it since like last September or I didn't do it since last November you know what I'm saying for me I rarely I rarely blow out my hair I'll blow out my hair if it's a special event that I'm going to and I want my hair to be really big because I love big hair that's another reason why I don't like washing goes but I love my hair to be really big so when I do blow out my hair it's either because I need a trim or because I have a special event coming up and since I kind of like mentioned heat damage in a way I do want to say that yes heat damage is repairable but why go through that like why go through all that work you really grew your hair so beautifully for you to go silk press it or for you to fly iron your hair every two weeks or every month every two to three months or whatever and you get heat damage and then you cut off your hair but you have to remember that that heat damage was once curls so it's just like why go through all of that why cut off your hair just to start all over again when you started your journey in september and your hair was right here and now your hair is down your back but you have heat damage so now you gotta cut it all off and it's gonna come back to being right here don't do that like just prevent the heat put it to the side forget that blow dryer you don't need it second thing on my list definitely that i have started to incorporate this year and another reason why your natural hair is not growing is because you are not deep conditioning regularly now i'm not the deep conditioning queen all right i literally just started to incorporate this this year because honestly i'm gonna be so transparent with you guys i never had time to deep condition my hair every week i'm sorry school got hectic baby and sometimes i would just leave my hair alone i just wouldn't do anything to it i wouldn't deep condition it regularly and honestly prior probably in 2020 i did start deep conditioning my hair regularly and i can say that i saw good results definitely my hair was softer it was easier um deep conditioning my hair made my ends very easy to detangle 
um, definitely I did not have any damage I did not have any split ends and all around it just it was it was just better like it was really really just better and now this year I'm incorporating that again because in 2021 I didn't do it but this year definitely my hair is so smoother it's shinier deep conditioning your hair restores moisture it reduces frizz and it definitely will help with flexibility elasticity and definitely with length retention so make sure you are deep conditioning your hair at least once a week um, I guess once every two weeks is good as well, but it's all about learning your hair and learning what your hair loves. The third thing on my list would definitely be detangling your hair when it's dry. Now, I personally, I don't detangle my hair when it's dry at all. No. I don't think anybody should do that because it definitely results to breakage. That's one. Like, why would you... Like, who does anything like that? Literally, like, let's really be real, y'all. Let's think about life like let's think about things that we do in our everyday life or let's talk about cooking like would you make a pizza dough without water like would you make a pizza dough without oil like things that soften it and making better to, and make it better to roll out like would you do that so why would you detangle your hair when it's dry that doesn't make any sense literally if you detangle your hair when it's dry you're you you don't love your hair you don't love your hair and that's just it you don't love it you don't love your hair if you detangle your hair dry. What, girl? You want your hair to break? You want split ends? Like, what? It, I, it just doesn't make any sense. Specifically, it's not really all about your ends. It's literally about your whole scalp. Like, from the root to the end. If you detangle your hair from your ends to your root, you're pulling out hair that's not supposed to be falling out. At all. At all. You're snapping your ends, you're chipping away your cuticles, and now the flexibility of your hair is going down. So why do that? Why put your hair through that? And plus... You're going to get a headache. Nobody wants to detangle their hair dry. Honestly, once you detangle your hair dry, it leads to your head being tender-headed. And nobody wants to be tender-headed. I honestly became tender-headed because of the many times that I definitely left my hair alone and didn't detangle it. And baby, when it came time for me to detangle it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had headaches. My scalp was a little soft. It was not cute, baby. It was not. Fourth thing on my list is definitely too much manipulation, baby. And this... Is facts. I don't care what anybody say. If you manipulate your hair a lot, your hair is not going to grow. And I do want to touch on something else after I finish saying this. Definitely too much manipulation does not only cause breakage and tension on your ends, but also on your scalp. And I do want you guys to understand something, especially when it comes to protective hairstyling. People say, okay, like I put my hair in knotless braids, or I put my hair in full locks, or I put my hair in soft locks, or I put my hair in twists because this is a protective hairstyle and this is how my hair grows. Now, let's backtrack, okay? Because I see a lot of people doing protective hairstyles, but they're manipulating that hairstyle, which is manipulating their hair. And let me just give you guys an example. So basically, if you get knotless braids and you're putting your hair in a constant tight bun, a constant tight ponytail, or all these styles because you're going to work or you're going to school, whatever, you're basically manipulating your hair. Are you forgetting that your hair is underneath the braid? Are you forgetting that your hair is attached to the braid? Like, literally. You guys have to be very, very careful when it comes to protective styling and manipulating it. Leave your hair alone. Nothing is wrong with getting knotless braids because I love me some knotless braids, baby. I look fab in them and I'm going to insert a video or a picture here. But I love knotless braids, okay? I got soft locks for my 21st birthday. I will never get them again only because I felt like it was a little tight and I also felt like too much work to take it down. And then three, I had also got faux locks. Now, faux locks and soft locks are two different things. I got faux locks uh, a while back, and I will never get it again because the middle of my head, some of my hair ripped out. I didn't have a bald spot, thank the Lord. <laughs> thank the Lord. But I did have some of my hair rip out in the middle of my head. I had a lot of shedding, and that's because the hairstyle was so, so tight. When I say tight, I think I'm going to insert a video or a picture here so you guys can see how tight my scalp was like literally my forehead was pulled back i couldn't move my head i had a headache for days days so i do want to let you guys know that please be careful when you do protective hairstyling all right low manipulation hairstyles too much tension please just be very very careful now when you do twists like this nothing is wrong with it but stop the tight braiding cornrows and putting a wig on your head no you're ripping out your edges just be smart about the decision that you are making especially when it comes to manipulation fifth thing on my list is definitely not moisturizing the ends of your hair now the ends of your hair are the oldest part 
up your hair all right i do want you guys to also understand that as well at least try to moisturize your ends at least once a week or maybe twice a week or maybe every other day so you know that it's staying moisturized make sure you tuck it in like for me definitely this is my favorite hairstyle this has been my favorite hairstyle for years now like literally i love these two twists once i started to learn how to do them i fell in love with them this is my hairstyle after my wash day i'll leave it like this and just go ahead and wash my hair in the next week or so but definitely when it comes to this i always moisturize my ends and this is a great hairstyle for your ends to be tucked away like tuck your ends away especially in the winter time because the winter time your hair gets dry it gets brittle it breaks it's prone to all of that. It's prone to all of that, baby. So make sure that you are tucking away your ends, moisturizing it with some butter, some leave-in, I don't know, some oils. Whatever your hair loves, make sure that you are moisturizing your ends, okay? Don't forget the scalp too, but the ends are very, very important because they are the oldest part of your hair. Now, the next thing on my list on why your natural hair is not growing is because you are not doing a lot of scalp stimulation. Now, I, like I said, I wasn't the queen of deep conditioning my hair every week, and I'm not the queen of doing scalp stimulation all the time, but I just learned how important scalp stimulation is, and I do realize that I do do them, but I don't do it often. Now, I would do scalp stimulation probably every time I wash my hair, or maybe every time I refresh my hair during the week, where I would just put oil in my scalp and just, you know, get all in there, you know, with my fingertips. You know, try to make sure the oil is getting all in my scalp, promotes hair growth, elasticity, flexibility with your scalp and your cuticles. Um, it definitely promotes hair growth. So make sure that you are getting that blood flow, you know, going, you know, getting that oil in, baby. Trust me. Hair growth in 2022. Nothing else. Just pure and natural hair growth. Make sure you guys are incorporating scalp stimulation. Also with scalp stimulation, you don't need like a specific oil to do it. Um, use any one of your favorite oils. Honestly, I have a couple of favorites. Um, I would say for right now, my favorite oil... Hmm, what's my favorite oil? As of right now, I do have three favorite oils, but I can say my first oil would be the Watch Me Grow by Beauty Ness. I would definitely put the link in the description down below. And then secondly, I have the Miel Rosemary Mint Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. And I just got this oil. I heard very, very good things about this. Third oil I would say is my favorite is the Melanin Hair Care Oil. Very light very moisturizing and i would use that all around my scalp oh and i also do have another one jamaican my cast oil never fails baby never fails i'm telling y'all if you want to grow your edges take my word for it please if you want to grow your edges okay use jamaican black castor oil if you want hair growth use jamaican black castor oil if you want it to help with your split ends use jamaican black castor oil i do not lie we don't lie on this channel all right use your making black castle i promise y'all all right take my word for it now next on my list on another reason why your natural hair is not growing is because you are using too much edge control now let me let me tell you guys something i'm gonna give you guys a little story all right there was a point in my life when i one did not know how to do my edges I knew about edge control and I knew about edges and it became a whole popular thing. Like people thought, oh my God, when you go out, you have to do your edges every single time. But don't follow this trend. Like this is, I think this is one of my unpopular opinions, especially when it comes to natural hair, which I will be doing a video on that. When it comes to your edges, don't make anybody make you feel bad because your edges are not done. All right. No. Some people don't really care about their natural hair, which is why they will manipulate it or use a lot of edge control and just leave it on there and let it get chunky and dry up and let it break off. But if you really nourish and you care about your natural hair, I would really say don't use a lot of edge control. And if you are a person that loves to do their edges when they go to school, every time they step out the house, even for five minutes, I would say at least wash it off. If you use edge control at least every day, make sure before you go to bed, you're at least washing it off because that will really prevent any sort of breakage, your hair falling out. Because when it comes to edge control, listen, if you don't wash it off, it gets chunky, it starts to turn white, your edges start to break off, and we need our edges. Like, we can have long hair, but if you have long hair and no edges, you gotta pick a struggle. You can't have both, baby. You gotta pick a struggle. So make sure you are washing your edge control off. And for me, I definitely do recommend you to oil your edges. Um, it definitely helps with hair growth. Don't let anybody make you think that your edges will not grow and it's gonna stay the same, baby, because no. Your edges will grow. The next most important thing on my list is trimming your ends. Now, 
trimming your ends is key baby it is vital some people say like oh my god you don't need to trim your ends all the time or you don't need to trim your ends at all but for me at least trimming your ends at least two to three times a month will prevent breakage it will prevent split ends all right it will definitely promote health growth promote health growth all right there's like there's like a whole like a whole thing here everything that i said you will see that if you don't do these things your hair will result in breakage and having split ends and split ends leads to your hair not growing and we want our hair to grow so definitely when it comes to trimming your ends it's very very important for you to trim your ends at least when your hair needs it all right don't go around and follow this trend like you need to trim your ends every month learn your hair and learn when your hair needs a trim because not every time you see little shabby ends is when your whole head needs a trim and honestly with me i would say i trim my ends when they get really really bad now when i say bad it's not like oh my god i'm gonna wait until my hair is like breaking 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 i will wait until the time when i blow up my hair because that's when my hair is stretched the most and i can really see okay like this is where my hair is at I can see where I need the trim. I don't cut off too much than needed. Trimming your ends make it easier and smoother and your detangling process is 100%. You don't have no issues when it comes to detangling when it comes time to trimming your ends. And a good way to know when your ends need trimming is when you're detangling the ends of your hair and like you almost hear a sound or you feel it. Like you feel it and you hear a sound. I think I don't know i'm gonna make probably another video on this so you know when to trim your ends but you would hear a sound and you would feel it you feel it when your hair is brittle when it needs to be trimmed and it can't detangle and it's dry trust me you know you will know when your ends need to be trimmed now the second to last thing on why your natural hair is not growing is because you are using the wrong hair products now being a naturalista definitely takes time all right it's a roller coaster it's a journey trust me some of us naturals been on this journey for like five to six years, all right? Take your time, learn your hair, learn what your hair needs, learn when to wash it, learn when to oil it, learn how to wrap it, learn what protective styling it likes, learn all of that, all right? Take your time and don't use the wrong products. Now, as a naturalista, we see like, okay, Oh my God, she used onion juice in her hair. Oh my God, she used grapeseed oil in her hair and her hair is down her back. Like that's going to work for me and my hair is going to be down my back in the next week. It doesn't work that way. But then again, it does work that way. And you want to know why? Because you never know. You never know what may work for you. You see somebody doing it, you go try it. It may work for you. It may not work for you. But that's how you learn and that's how you know what products to use, when to use it, where to use it, how to use it, why you're using it. You know, you just don't want to put something in your hair because somebody else is doing it, all right? Put it in your hair because you know why you're using it. Like, I'm using a leave-in conditioner because my ends are dry. Or I'm deep conditioning my hair every week because I suffered with split ends and breakage. Or I wash my hair every two to three weeks because I know my hair. I'm not like these other girls. Or I shampoo my hair every week. Some people wash their hair every week. Some people wash their hair twice a week. All right, make sure you know what you're using and why you're using it. Now, the last thing on my list, the 10th reason is again to take your time. All right, I've been natural since, <sighs> hmm, when can I say I started my natural hair journey? I would say probably the end of middle school is when I kind of started my natural hair journey. No, mm, yes, I would definitely say possibly the end of middle school is when I started my natural hair journey. Now, when you are natural, it's not to say like, you know, your hair is curly all the time. You know, even if your hair is blow dried out, it doesn't mean you're not natural. Like, don't let anybody tell you, oh my God, you're not natural because you flat iron your hair every week or you flat iron your hair once a month, okay? Once a week is a drag a day, but once a month, don't let anybody say that you're not natural because you do that. And I would say in high school, I did have my times where, yes, I used to blow out my hair probably once a month or when I felt like it, but I was still natural. And I would definitely say my journey started in middle school um, and it took a long time, all right? I have a stash of products, baby. I have a stash of products here, I have a stash of products there, and I'm still learning, you know? I'm still buying products and seeing what products mix well together when it comes to using a wash and go. I now see what products work well on my hair that doesn't cause flaking. It's all about taking your time. Again, going back to knowing what products works well for your hair, what products don't, um, it's very, very key and it's very, very vital to take your time. Don't rush it. Don't rush your wash days. Don't rush your protective styling. Don't rush doing anything when it comes to your hair. If you want to see growth, if you want to see elasticity, if you want to see your edges grow, if you want to get rid of that bald spot, whatever it may be, take your time. Be consistent. 
all right make sure you have a hair routine if you wash your hair every sundays okay if you wash your hair every two weeks okay if you deep condition every wednesday if you have a hair routine that's even better baby because i don't i just do it on any day that i want to but i know i do it which is a thing so stick to your own schedule take your time all right and just know what works for you like for me i recently did two wash and goes all right the first time i did the wash and go i didn't experience no flaking at all and i used the same products but i think i added a product in um and the second time that i did it i used the same products again same line but i added a product in that time and that caused my hair to flake and again it was a learning process for me my hair was flaking so bad it looked like i had dandruff um i don't have I don't have a video, I don't have a picture to show you guys, but like I said, it was a whole learning process for me and I learned that, okay, that product doesn't work for me. Moving forward, I can still use the line, the hair product line, but I just can't use that product when it comes to a wash and go. But that is officially the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed those 10 reasons on why your natural hair is not growing. Make sure you guys do incorporate some of these tips that I did give you guys and comment down below what you want to see next. And comment down below what gear are you um, when it comes to your natural hair journey, did you just start? Are you transitioning? Um, or what? what is your hair routine, you know? Um, but without further ado, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new. If you are OG, baby, thank you for still watching. Turn on that post bell notification so you get notified every single time we go upload a video, which is every Wednesday and Saturday now. And don't forget to follow me on my main social media account, at Hair Zaya. It is always on the screen, and the link is always in that description box. But without further ado, you are beautiful, you are unlimited, and you are the baddest thing out there. Bye, guys. <laughs>